All right, we are in the Hanami Heat nine hole cut. But before we get started in this, I was talking to my <clears throat> buddy Kyle Brady and uh, he showed me a hack and I wanna see if I can get it to work here on side spin, top spin stuff. So let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna, let's go into a hole number one. I'm gonna practice it. And we'll see, we'll see how this works here. We'll see. The deal is, is that if you've got a club that's got a lot of topspin and you put on all the topspin, you, you're limited on how much side spin you can get in. And with this hack, you can get all of the side spin and all of the topspin. So let's, uh, let's go see how it works. I, I did run one practice just to, just to make sure that I kind of, that it did work. And I believe it does. I believe it does. We can all thank Kyle for this if it works. So if we if we take this we'll take a regular hey a regular kingmaker and if we run this ball and we're trying to do top spin, so we do max top spin, I can only get one side spin on. Right? So let's swap the ball and go to a top spin boost ball. And we want to get some of that bonus top spin in there. So you can see I'm getting three and a almost four almost four side spin and then we're going to swap this ball out and we'll go to uh, this ball right here now we're, that was the same ball that was the same ball damn it now let's swap the ball and go to this ball which doesn't have any extra <clears throat> we'll switch we'll switch it over we'll have to do it again damn it damn it timed out <clears throat> So we'll go to the top spin boost ball and we want to make sure that we're in the extra top spin boost with as much side spin as we can possibly get on. So it'll be max top spin plus some of the bonus. And that gave me what, like three and a half, three and three quarter side spin. And we know that if we, <laughs> we know that if we run max top spin with a regular ball we can only get one side spin so here we go again here we go here we go here we go okay we got the right ball for the top spin so let's set our spin up so we've got as much and we got a little bit of top top spin boost now we're going to swap the ball and we'll go to this ball right here and it gives us my it sets the spin the spin set the same so we have the three and three quarters and we've got max with the three power ball. Now if we switched, let's see if it carries over again. So now we've got a Kingmaker with max top spin and three side spin. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So if you have a top spin boost ball in your inventory, you can uh, get that done just by doing, just by doing that, just by doing that. All right, there you go. A cheat. Well, not a cheat. It's just a hack. It's just the way the game works. So you can set the spin on one ball, switch the ball, and it'll keep the spin the same. And you've got the club. That way we can take our big topper, our maxed out extra mile, or our level 7 APOC when it's got the 85 top spin, and you'll be able to get uh, more side spin on some of those, which is good. Good. Yeah, I'm going to... Look at how steep it is right over here where that rough bump's at. Steep, steep. Think I can get up there with a regular three power ball? Let's see if I could get up there with a regular three power ball. Three, seven. Might have a better shot with a, uh, with a bigger hitting club. Let's try that. Maybe, maybe three seven. It's about three rings. Three rings is like three nine. I'm gonna put that forward distance back on there. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can pound it up there with just a regular three power ball. Nah, not when you hit seventy five rings great to the right. If I wouldn't have hit that great to the right, that would have made it. So a five power ball, just a regular five power ball. I don't even think you need any extra top spin boost. A five power ball, you could probably get up there without any overpower. I think we have a spot for a berserker. All right, all right, all right. 
I'll play this whole out. But there you have it. I could make this a short. I could I could edit that out and make it a short. How to get the how to get more side spin. You're getting it first though. Look at that. I have no notes. I have no nothing. I'm just gonna go out there and play. I'm just gonna go out and play in the hole. <laughs> In the hole. All right, this course is on multiple. What we have? We have uh, two different courses here. Gokasha Bay and something else. What do we need? What do we need? Let's take a let's take a power five ball. I think we can get up there with power five ball. Do I have a berserker here somewhere? 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 All right. All right. Here we go. Getting out on the course. Playing some golf clash. But of course. We had some kind of a blow up in my clan the other day. Dunner and one of the other... X Dragon? I, I have no clue. I haven't, I didn't go through the thing, but everybody got pissed and everybody quit. <laughs> I have no clue. That's what happens when you're not paying attention. I'm going to do 3.2 times 1.1 divided by One point three, two seven, two seven. I oh, when my I was actually playing it too, so I I was thinking for some reason I I've been practicing. I wasn't paying, wasn't paying. <laughs> barely, barely made that over. <laughs> I bet I've had a couple practices today and, and I was thinking I was practicing, but I, I, I'm actually out there, right? I am. I am actually on the course, so. And today's Friday's qualification round, so if I, if I screw up today, you're not qualifying. Why does that... Did they look at their second bounce? I, I have no idea where that's going to go. And it obviously, if it bounces right, it has the distance. Just barely. And that definitely looks like it's <clears throat> uphill. What do we got here? There's Max. There's Min. There's Mid. You can max, which is 1.1 per ring. I don't think I have enough backspin to stop me there. But max club 4.9 divided by 1.1. 1. 1. Be 145 or 445. I'm going to do 44. Four. There's three. There's four. Four. Getting it perfect. I missed it by that much. <laughs> that much. That last bounce would have uh, would have went in if the trajectory would have been right. Arr, arr. Well, with a short iron, this would be a great spot for a thorn because the thorn's got more backspin so that you could actually get up on the green where you're on the flat and you could bring your backspin back. And that way you could see your tail. It'd be a much better, much better deal. Thorn would have been the right club there. I, most people I see play a thorn, they, they think it's a one-trick pony and that it only does backspin. A thorn's got, especially when it's upper developed, it's got killer ball guide you can, and good topspin. You can run it up and there's a lot of shots that it's 
in my opinion, it's better to run it up to the cup and try and just drop it in than it is to do the backspin. Backspin, if you put a lot of backspin on there, especially if you've got any any side spin, the bounces are so compressed that the side spin is more effective. And so there's times when doing a backspin shot is advantageous, but there's a lot of times where you're just running the ball up there and almost everybody I see use a thorn only uses the backspin on it. And it is not a one-trick pony. All right, that was hole number one. Hole number one. What's hole number two? Hole number two. Da, 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 da. Let's go look at these holes. Let's go look at them. Let's go check them out. How I get a, at least a picture of them. I'm, I like to I like to look at the hole just so that I can remember. I look at those little thumbnails and they do nothing for me. I was so excited when we finally, when Golf Class Notebook first came out, when we finally got some bigger picture so that I could like remember the holes going into the tournament. And then you could, that was back in the one bag day. So you really wanted to make sure that you knew what you were doing so that you could fully set your bag up because you couldn't switch. You couldn't switch. All right. All right. And I don't know. I know I can switch the ball. I don't need a power five ball, that's for damn sure. I think we can just do this with a Marlin. With the Marlin. Could have saved myself a little bit of time by switching to that ball before I went out here. There's Max. There's Mid. Mid Grizzlies 1.1 per ring. 4.3 divided by 1.1. 4.7 rings. There's 4.7. Exactly. Hitting it perfect. Let's see if we can get close. It's going to be short. That wind laid me up and it pushed me off. I did a 20% adjustment there, but I probably should have did a little. Probably should have ran it through a little bit more. Arr. I like this hole too. Let's see if my opponent can get in. Get in the hole. I'm not sure what we need to get this week. There's, we do have several opportunities. There's some of these par threes that I think we have really good opportunities on, but it seemed like when I, if I remember correctly from the walkthrough the other day, there was a couple of these holes that uh, people could end up having some problems on and just getting minimum score out there on those particular holes. So if it's a par four, getting, getting your birdie might put you ahead you know that there's going to be like a 15 or 20 percent of the brackets going to fail on that hole and it seemed like there was a couple holes that were like that but there was some holes that uh we definitely have a good shot this this part through right here i think we have a really good shot this is a very makeable hole Hole number three. What is? What is? Hole number three. Gokasha Bay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a hole right here that having a big top spin boost ball. And I don't even think we need to do any, from the rookie tees, we don't really need to do anything special. We can just kind of try and go straight at it. What are, what is my ball options here? What ball do I have the most of? Do I have any top spin boost ball that I have a lot of? 
I got I got a few of those. Let's try that. Let's try it. Why not? I think if you bring out the top spin boost, like, a, like if you have a power three ball with top spin boost versus just a power five ball without top spin boost, the top spin is huge. But if you had a power five ball with top spin boost here, that would be a, be good. And I'm, I think I probably have a few, but I only have a few and I'm not willing to waste them. could get them in a really good spot and that might be the way to go is just to bring out a power five ball to get past that peninsula up there on the first uh, first bounce to get the angle right because I like coming in what my opponent's doing where they're coming in on the left hand side because when you get down in here everything wants to fall to the right Ooh. Arr. still be able to make that. I'm going to leave that wind in. Go straight at it. Two rings great to the left. That might not kill me. It'll kill me. If it kills me, it'll kill me right here on the second bounce. That'll give me a pretty decent that might be in my wedge range. That might be max wedge right there. I play my rapier at 1.2 at max. It might be one of those deals where I'm at max club, but I can pull back to mid and run my top spin out. This green's got a lot of moguls and a lot of movement on the green, so sometimes it's it's okay to run your top spin out, and sometimes it's uh Sometimes the course, as you're running it, it, the course is wanting to move your ball if your speed is not absolutely perfect. Let's see where I'm at. I'm in, there's minimum Kingfisher or maximum wedge. I'm gonna do max wedge. It's 1.2 per ring, so 2.7 divided by 1.2. It's two and a quarter rings. It's two and a quarter. Hitting it perfect. Man, I thought I'd release that too early. In the hole! Albatross. All right, that's one way to do it. And I did that straight up, but it looked like from where it came in, I might have wanted to add on like a 0.1. I did 2.25, maybe maybe just round that up to 2.3. Close, close, but in the hole, we'll take it. We'll take it. We will take it. Hole number four. Hole number four. I, I like the fact that I was able to come in at it from this side. If you come at it from over here, even from the Ricky T, if you draw a line, like if you were coming at it from over here and you draw a line to that, in order to get down this fairway, you're going to have to put curl on it, which is going to involve this. And everything down here is falling off to the right. So being able to come in from the left so that when you hit this area, it drifts off to the right is beneficial. So being able to start off on this side, but having enough so that you can get one bounce here and then clear this entire area before you get your second bounce is, is definitely, definitely, definitely good. The key, the key. All right, this is another one of those holes that's... All right. I like to go from right here and just go at it. I'm going to bring a Marlin. I don't think I need anything special. I don't even know that I need any spin. 
other than just like a sliver of topspin. Just a sliver. I think I'm in, I might be a mid club here, maybe. 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 If I can get an opponent. Fun folks only. I go first. I'm eking towards max. There's mid. That's eking max. I'm going to do one per rank. Three point eight divided by one four thirty seven four three seven. There's four thirty seven exactly. You hit me perfect. No, I didn't pull it enough. Or maybe I pulled it enough and I didn't set it up right. Who knows? I did a 15% right there, but in the past, it was always like a 10% on this. Maybe like a 10% plus 0.1, but they've gone through and over the years and adjusted these. I am not a fan of hitting off that island. I'll tell you, I'm good. I'm glad they didn't hit off that island. I'm not a fan of hitting off that island. And part of the reason is if you're in a big wind, you involve that island is flat and then it rolls off on either side. So if you're right dead center in the middle, you've got maybe two or three rings. But if you've got to pull more than that, now you're starting to get into the area where it's distorting your rings or you'll have to pull over the sand. My opponent, even though they had to put more spin on their ball from there, they were coming, instead of rolling through all these little hills that were here, they were they were coming at the cup on a little bit flatter area, more like in a trough. In the hole! All right, all right. So far, we got two par threes that are extremely makeable haven't made anything on those par threes, but those par threes are makeable. They're definitely worth going out there if you've got practice token and practice those holes to get the to get exactly what you need as far as the the wind adjustment. The extra, the minus, whatever. I don't like saying elevation because elevation in this game is all bullshit. We get so many uphill shots that we don't take wind off or that we don't have to do or we do. We still at, you know, it's not uh, it's not right. Now, I did this the other day and I did a max overpower hook shot and ended up down in here. And I actually ended up overshooting and into the rough a little. I'm gonna do that max overpower hook shot again, but I got I gotta try and remember where I was at. I, I remember that I did bring a katana. I remember that. I do. This is one of those ones where you can't get the whole you can't get the whole let me let me let me do our our trick here. Hold on. Let's see if I can get is that is that already one of those pinned ones? Pinned? Katana is pinned. Which one do I got with Top Sound Boost? That one, I'm going to start off with this one. Let's select that ball. Okay. All right. 1.1 times. Man, I'm going to have to do a bunch of shit here. We'll run the spin first and get the three side spin on. And then switch to a katana, max top spin, three side spin. If I can get an opponent. A 
Let's see if we go first. We do go first. Let's set spin first. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, now let's uh, swap balls to... Oh, you rat bastard. Did it not say that it was fucking... All right. Okay, so there's five, there's 15. Yeah, I forgot where I was at. I should have gone out farther, I'm sure. Nope. Ooh! Damn rat bastard. <laughs> I had my white ring off of that, uh, I was trying to go out 21 rings, and I think my white ring was off of this. So this is the first cut of the rough. This is the second cut. I think my white ring was right there on the transition between the first and the second cut. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So could have worked on that a little better. Just a little bit too much topspin. Now, if I hit this perfect, it's going in the hole, though. That's for sure. Let's hit it perfect. Okay, there's max, there's mid. And I'm in the I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. If I hit it perfect, it's going in the hole. Oh, I hit it one ring great, but I did hit it on the side that if you're gonna hit it great. It was a good side, but not enough. That hitting it great on that side, it hit 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 further. That landing zone didn't work for that top spin. Arr. That was the side to hit it great on, though, because it's rolling down the hill going this way, and the wind's going that way, so it could break and fall on the cup. Whereas if I hit it great to the left, the wind's going that way, and it's breaking that way, and it probably more than likely missed to the left. But a one ring great on that shot, if my spin would have been right, could have been, could have been, could have been good. Hold on. All right. In the hole, let's get it in the hole. In the hole, all right, all right, all right. Nothing special. I'll be curious to see what the scores are up at the top. And we haven't gotten to what I think of as the, the hard holes, the holes that will eat people's lunch. I think that first par four though, is that hole number one? I think there, that is a hole that you can end up in some trouble in if you're trying to do something tricky because of how the green is mounded up. It, it's kind of tricky to get onto that green if you're really trying to go for it. You could find yourself in a spot of bother. Hole number six. Hole number six. All right. I'm trying to go for the rough bump right here, and I really want to be, there's a sign out here, and I really want to be in track with that sign. It gives me the best shot at it. And you don't have to have anything. I think you could probably do this with a... Now, the other day, I came out, and I think I was almost in trouble with where I was at. Like, a katana might be the way to go here. Let me think. I know there was a red line issue. If I would have gotten a little bit farther, I wasn't quite far enough. And so I was at like minimum sniper and I barely had enough room to work out the wind, but I didn't get far enough. If I would have got far, far enough, I would have been in Grizzly. 
And so let's make sure we get far enough. But if you bring a katana, I don't know that you need to get as much distance and you'll just be with a sniper. I'm going to... I'm going to bring a katana. We'll, we'll try it. We'll try it with a katana. This is where practice comes in handy. Going out here and playing these holes so that you can get a consistent... The deal is, is that I'm, I have no idea where I'm going to end up. Because I don't know, I don't have any notes to go, hey, when you're setting up the drive, you want to put on two top spin and you want to put on one right-hand side spin and then you're going to just hit it normal and not do anything and end up in a spot. And from that spot, that's the perfect ball for you to have a mid sniper or a minimum sniper. So by not having that, I don't know, like, will I be in between? I want to aim right for that sign. And I'm just going to do five. Two, two. I'm going to do two rings. That's two, six. Perfect. Perfecto. Now it's all about whether or not I, I put myself in a spot where I'm in between clubs. Now I, laid, I left myself way short so that I'm, I should be in my sniper. And with a two power ball instead of a three power ball, I should be like, hopefully I'm in like mid sniper. And mid sniper is 1.1 .1 and I think traditionally I've added on like 10% on the second shot. So if I am in mid sniper, it's gonna be whatever the wind is. We'll see if I we'll see if I'm actually far enough where I got the shot that I'm looking for. Or did I? Ah, there's man. I am in minimum sniper. So 2.3 divided by, or excuse me, times 1.1 divided by 1.2. It's 2.1 rings. Two, one. Oh, that was seven thousand rings. Great, good distance. It was probably one, but it looked like it was two rings. Great to the left. It's hard to tell when it's on the when it's on the edge whether it's counting it as one or two, but. We'll hope from as far away as I was that that was just a one ring off. Now, I will... I didn't see where they were at between clubs. Hitting off the island, especially when you're playing one-on-one -on -one and you bring out a smaller ball, you're going to have to hit off that island a lot because you won't have enough distance to get to that rough bump. But hitting off that island is tricky because you can clip that rough and... Doing a second bounce rough bump there as opposed to a first bounce rough bump is uh, not really the way to go if you really want to make that. And that bouncing off the island is can be dangerous. Anybody that's played any one-on-one -on, -one on this hole knows exactly what I'm talking about. Knock it off, Buster. Busta. In the hole. Eagle. All right. All right. Hole number six is in the bag. What do we got up at the top so far? Ten. If they get the. <clears throat> we're looking at twelves. This guy's looking at thirteen. Hole number seven. I am going to be curious to see what the minimum score is going up. This would be a great week to play. Uh, Pro, because I think pro on these, you you can put yourself in the same exact positions as you can a rookie. 
And I think just like picking up one or maybe two shots with 13 or 14 in pro would probably, probably get you up towards the top. Maybe. I'm going to go from this area and try and get up in here, but you can overshoot this. You can. We'll bring out a kingmaker. Heartbreaker. And a bag. And I'm going to do... I'm not going to put on all the topspin. I'm going to take off like maybe one, one and a half topspin. So if you've got a level seven, level eight extra mile, that should be more than enough topspin. And a Titan will work fine. Let's see which way the wind is blowing. Two point two divided by one point three. Let's see where we're at. Max. I'm gonna do one and a half less than max. One point eight six ring, so one point nine. I'm gonna do two just for safety. Max curl. Hitting it perfect. That should be fine. Fine. From right there. Fine. Now, it's definitely an uphill shot, so theoretically we should be taking a little bit of wind off. But that's not how it works in Golf Clash. It always works that way if it's downhill. You're always adding wind on. But on these uphill shots, it doesn't work. That's why anytime anybody tells you it's an elevation deal, it's not an elevation. It's some bullshit. It's a variable that they have put in there that they can change. On what kind of an adjustment... Let's see, where are we at here? Minimum Kingfisher. 3.5 divided by 2.1, 1.6 1 rings. Let's make sure we're through the cup. 1.6 rings. Is that right? Yep. One. Six. Getting it perfect. In the hole. Woo! In the hole. All right. In the hole. Go home, Paul. I almost over pulled that and I took off 5%. I play my Kingfisher at 1.1 at max and 2. Point at, I should be playing it at 2.2 at min and I don't care what the book says or what Golf Clash Notebook says. I, some of these clubs you got to figure out. You got if you're using the app then use the app, but if you're not using the app and you're doing it by pen and paper, you know, like how you feel the club hit and I think if I would have did the 2.2, I at 1.5, probably would have been right at it. If I was taking notes on this, maybe 5% off at 2.2 at min. I like that it went in, but it almost didn't. It almost didn't. I was close. We'll count that as if you can't be good, be lucky. This is another one of those par threes that uh, all three of these par threes are very makeable, but they're not as makeable as they used to be. They used to be extremely makeable. Let's take a let's take a Marglin. 
I don't think I need anything more than a marlin. All these holes used to be like in tour two or tour three, and so they were, you don't need big spin, big stuff balls in order to get to the cup. And sometimes it actually, especially in one-on-one -on -one play, sometimes bringing out a bigger ball and you get to the shootout, that bigger ball helped might have helped you on the course, but it might hurt you in the shootout because these holes are really set up for using smaller balls. Four, six, hey, hey, 4.6 divided by, where am I at? I'm at max grizzly, 0 0.9, 6.38 rings. I'm gonna actually pull back to mid grizzly. 1.1, 5.22 rings, and run it up there a little. Five point two two rings. There's five two two. If I can get it off before I run out of time, hitting it perfect. Now I did a twenty percent there at mid club. And I either didn't get my spin right so the there's a little plateau right here, and I hit on the edge of that plateau, so as the ball was rolling up, it's wanting to drift off to the right. Whereas if you can start up on here, where it's on the flat, it may run a little bit truer. So maybe on my setup, instead of trying to go straight at it, setting up a little bit more to the left and then bringing the ball down. Once again, these par threes are definitely worth practicing. If you really want to, if you really want to get the the deal here, is practicing these holes. These three par threes are definitely worth practicing, and you can see what I'm talking about, where there's a, it's on a mound, and that's the other thing about these greens, these par threes is, it used to be they used to be flat, and what they've done is they've taken the green and they've taken the cup and they've put around the cup on a mound. Whereas the course used to have, it may have some moguls and stuff in it and some movement, but the, the hole was flat. But now what they've done is they put it on a mound. So as you're coming up to the hole, if your speed's, you may have the right trajectory, but if your speed's not absolutely perfect, as it encounters this little dome and as it's running up to it, the ball is going to start to drift off because of the terrain and, and take you off trajectory. You may have hit it perfect you may have done a perfect wind adjustment everything you did was perfect but with spin and speed it you got as you're trying to just release to roll up to the cup the terrain itself the topography is actually pulling you off trajectory all right hole number nine hole number nine What do we have for hole number nine? Let's go look at it. Got to remember what I was doing. I was like, what the hell are you doing? All right, all right, all right, all right. Once again, I think this was a katana hole. I was trying to remember the other day I hit it out into here and I, I had a shot with the rough bump. But you can clip this rough and just bleed it out here. And, and I think... If, if you bring out a kingmaker and you hit all the way in here, you could end up being in an in-between club area. And I think the katana was the way to go, but I, I'm not so sure I need the distance. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to try and get all the way to the end. I'm just going to put it right here and we'll see. We'll see if that, if that's right. And it's always nice when we can use a katana instead of using a kingmaker. Since they're quite a bit cheaper quite a bit I will add on 10% on the drive just for safety I go first I go first where's my second bounce
4.3 divided by 1.3. I'm going to just try and do that rough bump just to try and bleed out there. It's 3.62. There's 3.62. Hitting it perfect. We'll see if I can clip that rough and actually just bleed out there. Just put me in the middle instead of trying to get all the way to the end and see if that puts me in the right part of my club. And I got a nice straight angle at it. Now the wind should be from this, from where I'm at, I should have an absolutely straight up shot with the wind behind me. So if I hit perfect, I mean, I should have a serious opportunity for this to go in the hole. Serious. Thor's Hammer 8. Look at that. I got a Thor's Hammer 8. They played 13,000 games. Excellent. They played some upper upper stuff. Get their Thor's Hammer. The other thing too is, is if every time, if you get up to a certain point where the Thor's Hammer starts appearing in the store, if you buy three every time, helping your clubs out. All right, there's Max, there's Min, there's Mid. So I'm about mid club. So 2.9 divided by 1.1. I'm gonna just do a max adjust or a mid adjustment. with no extra. Hey. If I can get the fucking, it's wanting to jump. It's one second, it's in one spot, two, six, three. There's two, six, three. Hitting it perfect. Oh, over pulled it. Over pulled. And I did it at mid. Now we really have to make that. Now we have to now we have to end with a great recovery. <laughs> Pulling into that sand. I should have a pretty good, pretty good shot from there. Let's see how much they pull it. It was like one, two rings. One ring great to the right. All right, we have to, I got to make this. I'll qualify whether I make it or not, but man, it would just be a great, uh, great opportunity here. I'm going to hedge my bet. I'll give myself a perfect and a great to the right. And I hit a great to the left. Jules missed it. Look at that. You go the whole round, have a pretty good round, and then tank it on the last shot. I was in the right spot, though, with the, with the katana just chipping it out there. If I'd have hit all the way to the other side, I would have been, I think I would have been in between clubs. I would have been right. I would have been at the point where I would have needed to hit that shot with my sniper, but I wouldn't have, I would have been right at minimum club, and I wouldn't have had any room to work out the wind. So I would have had to start off on the green and do a backspin shot. All right, there you have it. That's how you have a great round and then fail at the very end. <laughs> fail at the very end. Still gave me first, in, at least in the op at least so far. But uh, I'm sure somebody will come up there and knock that out. But that's uh, that's somewhat how to get it done. I picked up two and dropped one. All right, all right. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, everybody, uh, especially at the very beginning with the top spin, doing the top spin. So. What I did there, just going back over that, brought out 
a ball that had top spin boost so that I could run, get into the top spin boost, even a little, and then with as, with as much side spin as I could get, being able to get on three and a half, almost maybe three and three quarters, and then switching to a ball, a three side spin ball, so that I can get the whole three side spin and all the top spin. So with my big topper, with maximum top spin, 100 top spin, I was only able to get one side spin. But if I did this trick where I started off with the lion ball or any ball that's got top spin boost, setting, setting it up and then switching back to the ball that you want to use, then you can get all of the side spin and all of the top spin. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Have a great week and I will see you. I'm, I, I will try and play tomorrow. I will. I will try. I will try. I will see you then. Be safe.